Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be demonstrating and trying out the two new Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit palettes that I picked up, as well as showing you comparisons with the previous palettes and other products that I already own from Hourglass and hopefully helping you decide whether you want or need these and choose between these palettes if you're a bit stuck. So if that sounds helpful, then keep watching. So there are three palettes available from our glasses, believe it or not, holiday collection. Yes, that's happening already. And this year they feature this limited edition artwork from Katie Scott with a nod to the 5% donation that Hourglass make from their products to the non-human rights charity, which is an animal charity. So each of these palettes come with this stunning artwork, and this is apparently limited edition artwork as well. So reading between the lines, that kind of indicates to me at least that the palettes themselves may become permanent, but the artwork is limited edition, so may not linger around for too long. These palettes will set you back £78 or $85 each, and they're currently only available on Hourglass's own website, but they will be shortly, I'm sure, in the next week or so, arriving at other retailers. So I did do a launch video on this collection, just showing you what was going to be available and what was in them and all of the colours. What we didn't know, or what I didn't know when I made that video, was that you were able, going to be able to customise your packaging with your palette. So you don't have to have a certain palette with the certain packaging. So if you prefer the butterfly packaging, but the tiger palette, you can actually customize and mix and match however you like between the palettes, which is amazing. Because I know there are lots of people who preferred the tiger packaging, but the butterfly palette or the elephant palette, but they didn't like the elephant artwork. So you can now actually mix and match however you like, which is an awesome little bonus. So I didn't do that. I was afraid to like mix and match them up. I actually love the butterfly packaging, which is the one palette I skipped on but I didn't want to mix and match these up because I just felt for review purposes it would be very confusing if I was showing you a tiger cover but that was not the tiger palette inside and I felt like that might actually lead people to buy or purchase the wrong palette because of me and me confusing you because I customized the packaging so I have left mine well alone I just picked up the standard elephant palette and packaging tiger packaging and palette. So nobody got confused other than me, apparently. Now I was actually expecting to have this review up on Thursday or Friday of last week. When I ordered my palettes, I actually qualified for free next day DPD shipping. And so I was expecting them to come. I ordered them Wednesday lunchtime. I was expecting them to come Thursday and have this review up for you like the same day. So I always try to get them up as soon as possible, particularly with limited edition items before they sell out to try and help you guys. But as time ticked over and it was clear they weren't coming on Thursday and then they weren't coming on Friday, I reached out to Hourglass to say, huh, what's up with this next day shipping? Because it's been two days now. And they actually replied to me saying that they are experiencing unprecedented levels of orders at the moment and therefore there is a delay with shipping. So if you're still waiting for yours, then the shipping is delayed your palette's unlikely to have been lost. There's not a problem with your order. It's just taking a lot longer, which shows actually the popularity of the launch this year because clearly they were unprepared. I also just wanna say when I did get my order, this is how it was packaged. So the two palettes were just in this box, very loose, lots of space. And this was the only like protection wrapping packaging in this large box. And it wasn't sort of wrapped around them. It was just kind of dumped in there. So I was very concerned when I saw that, that these palettes were going to be like broken, destroyed, smashed up inside. That really is not good enough. And I'm really surprised to see that. Usually when you order directly from a brand's website, they package and care for their own products better than you know some retailers. So that is problematic and dangerous. And I am concerned that some people are gonna get their products broken. You know, these are delicate, very expensive, softly pressed baked powders. And I'm alarmed that they're just not being packaged safely and with proper like wrapping to, you know, keep our prized products nice and safe when they arrive. So that's just something that I wanted to point out because that <laughs> needs to be addressed. So let's take a closer look at these palettes. Okay, so let's start off with the elephant palette. So this palette has four brand new shades and two existing shades, which are the two finishing powders, dim light and soft light. 
All four of the cheek shades are new for this palette. We have Beaming Strobe Light, which is a metallic strobe powder. We have Lustrous Bronze Light, the bronzer, and then the two new blush shades in Iridescent Coral and Radiant Rose. And here is the palette swatch. We have the two finishing powders, which you can just about see. The highlight on the top row, the bronzer and the two blushes. So quite a sort of muted, lighter color story in this palette, ideal for probably fair to medium skin tones. And now for the Tiger palette. And you can probably already see that this is much richer and deeper than the Elephant palette. This palette has the most brand new shades out of the three palettes this year, with only one re-promoted shade, which is the Ambient Lighting Finishing Powder in Transcendent Light. This is a existing shade of that powder. All of the other cheek products in here are brand new for this palette. So we have a Metallic Strobe Powder in Brilliant Glow Strobe Light, and a blush in Burnished Glow. Then we have the Metallic Strobe Powder in Divine Strobe Light, we have the Metallic Strobe Powder in Copper Flash Strobe Light, and we have the blush in Iridescent Rose. And here you have those swatches. So this is the Ambient Lighting Powder, the Highlight and Blush from the top row, and then we have the Highlight, the Highlighter, the Deeper Highlighter or Highlighting Blush for lighter skin tones, and then the other blush there from the bottom row. And here are the two palettes side by side. So you can see Tiger definitely deeper and richer. Better choice for you if you have a medium or deeper skin tone. And Elephant definitely a lighter, more muted version with less depth to the shades. Okay, so I'm gonna start off on this side of my face using the Elephant palette, and I'm going into the bronzer first with my Sonia G Face Pro brush. All of my brushes fit nicely in these pans. Sometimes they're kind of a bit of overlap, but it's, it's really quite easy to fit sort of regular sized brushes in here, which I appreciate. So today for shade reference, I have on the shade Aruba in my NARS what is that foundation called? Luminous foundation? <laughs> you know the one. And this bronzer is definitely bronzing me without, you know, I have been building it up, but really with not much effort at all, I'm getting, you know, a good bronze out of this bronzing powder, despite the fact it actually looks quite light. Hourglass powders do build quite nicely and quite effectively. So yeah, this is definitely gonna work up to like a medium skin tone, this bronzer which is nice and surprising actually, but it, it's certainly easy to use a light hand as well if you have a lighter skin tone. So I think this, this palette is going to work for anyone from like a fair to a medium. So there is only one standard highlight in here, which is this shade up here. So I'm gonna use this on my Sonia Fan Pro. Ooh, it's quite a beaming highlight actually by Hourglass's standards you know, the metallic formula, so it is enhancing my texture and it is giving me, you know, a lot of glow. <laughs> Definitely quite texture enhancing, this formula. Not a kind of subtle, but quite a beaming metallic formula, but a nice color melted, you know, nicely into the skin and they do buff nicely into the cheeks. For blush, of course, I want to use the coral shade because that's just me. I love a coral blush. And I'm gonna use my Sonia G Detail from the Lotus collection. I mean, that easily fits in there because it is a nice small brush. Actually, this blush is very subtle, more muted than I was expecting based on how it looks in the pan actually just about works for me. A little bit light actually for me. I'm having to build that up very, very subtle on my skin tone. That actually makes me want to try the other blush just to see if that gives us a more vibrant amount of color. So you can tell whether this is going to offer you what you want. I mean, it already looks brighter and more vibrant 
on my brush, yes. And of course you can mix these two together to get a third sort of blush option from the palette. So I am going to use the finishing powders just to do a bit of a buff as I would around those powders, but I don't think you're really going to see a lot from it other than obviously it kind of getting away with doing away with these sort of harsher lines, but it's not really going to show as a colour change or anything like that. But I definitely think you, I don't know if you'll be able to see so much on camera, but these finishing powders are a little light for me. They are sort of lightening my skin tone and also it can look a little ashy if you have too light a shade and that's definitely kind of going on here a little bit so just to note that these are quite light for my sort of summer skin tone I'm just going to add a bit more blush black back in uh, because we lost a bit of that with those ambient finishing powders looks a bit odd with bronzer and half of my forehead I appreciate <laughs> Okay, so that is the elephant powder on this side of my face. Everything blended really nicely and built really nicely, which I appreciate. It is sort of more subtle and muted on my skin tone. Obviously, if you have a fairer skin tone, the colors will be more impactful and vibrant, but this, everything worked on me really nicely with a bit of building, definitely usable. The finishing powders in this palette are definitely slightly lighter than what I would typically use on my current skin tone. Uh, but yeah, everything blended really beautifully and worked really nicely. The highlight is definitely a bit too metallic for my typical taste because it really did enhance my texture. With the blush over the top, it has helped it slightly, but it is definitely still quite texturally but it definitely is quite enhancing texture on, on my cheek area, that highlight. So yeah, definitely a more beaming highlight than I typically go for. So next let's try the Tiger palette on this side of my face. And obviously this is an ambient lighting powder, but I'm not gonna be able to use this in that way because this is going to be too dark for my skin tone. So I thought I would try this as a bronzer just to see if you're someone who's drawn to this palette and the other shades in this palette like myself, but you are too light to use this as a powder, finishing powder. I wanna see if we can actually get some use out of that shade as a bronzer. Of course, you could also use it on the eyes. So let's see, it is very subtle. I think that's the thing. It does obviously look very dark in here, but it is, you know, a sort of pretty sheer finishing powder. So it's not got huge amounts of pigment to it. And although it looks quite sort of rosy in the pan, actually on the cheeks, definitely works as a bronzer. I actually really like that. It's nice and subtle, buildable again, like all our glass powders. And that gives a really nice effect, I think, as a bronzer, a nice natural rosy bronze. I'm really happy with that. That's ideal for me. I wasn't sure actually when I saw the color in the pan whether that's gonna work as a bronzer on me, but I think it really looks very nice really nice natural bronze to the skin and I really like the colour so that's great. So there are actually three highlighters in this palette, one, two and three, but obviously this shade on me would be like a highlighting blush or a blush topper, but a beautiful highlight for deeper skin tones. That's why again this palette is so versatile because you can just, you know, use the shades in here how they will work best for you so you can use this as a finishing powder setting powder or a bronzer or on the eyes you can use this as a highlight or as a blush blush topper depending on your skin tone you just need to alter how the shades work for you and how you use them so that i really love about this palette why the, i said in my information video that this was immediately for me like the best one or the best one for me at least. So I think I'm going to use this highlight because I'm just curious about this colour and how it's going to work on me. Oh this is much more up my street this highlight you can immediately see it's much smoother and subtle and it's not enhancing my texture anything like as much as this one. This definitely is more sort of up my street as a highlight, absolutely ideal for me. Really melting into the skin, a very pretty glow as opposed to like a metallic shine. Much happier with this type of highlight versus the more metallic one in the elephant palette. 
this is much more like my type of highlight. But I am going to use the other one just to see. This one looks like it will be much more beaming. So I'm going to use this one down the bridge of my nose. Yes, so as you can see, much more beaming that non-marbled highlight. This highlight is definitely a more metallic and again, highlights how more much more versatile this palette is because you've got, you know, a soft, subtle, luminous option for highlight. You've got a super beaming metallic highlight and then you've got a beautiful toned highlight that you could use as a blush topper with a lighter skin tone. So you've got more options to play with in here. Now, I absolutely have to use this orange blush because for me, it's like the most exciting shade in the palette. I love an orange blush and it's just calling my name. Oh, that's so pretty. <gasps> yes, love that shade. Wow, again, I won't need to build this up because this is super rich and pigmented and this is gonna look gorgeous on deeper skin tones. But I'm happy to see it's actually super vibrant because that's gonna be much more versatile for people with a like tanned and deeper skin tone. Gorgeous. And I'm kind of tempted to put this highlight shade over the top just to see how much shine we get at the moment this is just a gorgeous glowing like luminosity but I wonder what it'll be like with the highlight over the top Oof. that's so pretty so yeah that is working beautifully as a blush topic it's definitely enhancing texture now that I've placed that highlighting shade over the top but a beautiful shade, so much glow. Now there isn't a finishing powder in this for my skin tone, so I'm just gonna use my clean brush, nothing on it, just to buff and tone this down slightly. I did want to build up just so you can see how this might work for you if you have a deeper skin tone than mine, but obviously that blush is pretty intense for my skin tone. Just gonna calm that down a little bit. And here you have the finished elephant palette side and the finished tiger palette side. This side definitely feels smoother and more refined to me versus the elephant side, which I think is definitely showing more texture. I don't know if that will show as clearly on camera, but in person, this side looks a lot smoother despite having not been able to use the ambient lighting powder to so sort of buff and smooth. But yeah, I'm definitely preferring the tiger size, just more my color story. And I really love the that I'm able to use that finishing powder as a bronzer. And it just seemed, felt much more versatile being able to use it in lots of different ways versus like the kind of one way that I can use the elephant palette. But what do you guys think? Tiger or elephant? So let's get on with some comparisons to previous years and previous launches from Hourglass. I have the Unlocked and Sculpture palette to compare, as well as the Ghost blush quad that was previously released. And then I have two sort of standalone single blushes, Euphoric Fusion and At Night. So let's do some swatch comparisons with these new palettes. So this is the Ambient Lighting Powder from Tiger and the bronzer from Elephant. Then we have the bronzer from the Unlocked palette, very similar actually to Elephant. And then we have the Sculpture bronzer, which is a similar tone actually to the Tiger powder, but lighter. Next we have the three blushes or the two blushes and one blushing highlight from Tiger. Then the two blushes from Elephant. You can see they're much lighter, less vibrant than the blushes from Tiger. Then we have the blushes from Unlocked, which are very muted and light. The blushes from Sculpture, again, still quite a bit more muted and lighter than either of this year's palettes. I've run out of arm room a little bit, so I've wiped the rest of the swatches off. So we have now Tiger and the Elephant blushes. And this is the Ghost Quad. I mean, again, you can see much, much lighter 
and less vibrant than really anything that we had this year as far as blushes. Euphoric Fusion and At Night. Again, just shows you these blushes in Tiger are more vibrant than anything I've really seen before from Hourglass. Certainly deeper, richer, much, much better for deeper skin tones than anything we've seen before. And now we have the two highlights from the Tiger palette and the one highlight from Elephant. I mean, I think there you can see the difference of how much more beaming that highlight is in the Elephant palette versus those in Tiger, particularly the marbled highlight is definitely much more subtle and soft. And then we have the highlight from Unlocked and the highlight from Sculpture. Sculpture, again, a much more subtle formula, kind of in line more so with the Tiger highlight. And then the one from Sculpture, much brighter and more beaming, but both lighter than, again, what we've got this year. And I'm gonna have a look at the highlights from these two new palettes against the Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. Poof. Okay, all much lighter, brighter and more metallic than what we have this year. The, th the third sort of deepest shade in that trio is the closest probably to, you know, the more beaming shade out of Tiger. But again, we've got more sort of richer options and that's not including that blush shade, which is obviously much deeper of a highlight than we have here. Okay, so we've had all the info, the demos, the swatches, comparisons. Here are my final thoughts on these two palettes from Hourglass. Now, first up, let's talk about this packaging. So these are going to be like a personal preference, whether you love or hate these in comparison to like the typical gold packaging plane that we've seen from the brand before. This is that like metal tin sort of component. It has a strong magnetic clasp, a large decent mirror that I appreciate. The inside I think looks really, really nice with that gold in there. I will say I like these images, I think they're beautiful. I am a plain packaging kind of girl. I prefer the sort of understated gold. That's just my personal preference, but these are going to appeal to lots of people because they've got those beautiful animals on. And it's really a beautiful nod to the fact that Hourglass donate 5% of their profits to the Non-Human Rights Project, which is an animal charity. So I think it's a nice nod to that. Lots of people have been comparing these, sort of the style of this packaging to Shantakai and the fact that they always do the animal images on their collections and also donate to those animal charities. So I think that's gonna be a love-hate thing. I will say that they look less bright and vibrant than I expected them to. They're a little more muted as far as the colors in person, I think. So that, again, is a plus or a minus depending on your preferences. The other thing I noticed is that not so much the Tiger palette, this feels slightly sturdy, but, and they do have a nice weight to them, but the Elephant palette is quite like rattly. And I feel like if you're using this a lot, opening and closing it a lot, I'm not sure that how well that's gonna hold up. It feels a little clunky and a little rattly and a little flimsy, just with regards to the opening. The other thing that I really don't like is that they don't stand up. So you can't sort of stand this up and look in the mirror, you, it's really even hard to take photos of them when I was trying to photograph the collection because it just lies flat, it won't stay up. And that's something that I haven't seen from the brand before. You know, they usually stand up so that you can look in and use the mirror, whereas these this year, they don't. They fall down which I don't love. But as far as what we've got inside, everything in here worked beautifully. I've never had an issue really with Hourglass powders performing. I think that the Elephant palette is going to work beautifully. Everything in here you're gonna be able to get a lot of use out of if you have like a fair to a light medium skin tone. My skin tone in summer is around a medium. I'm currently wearing like Nars Aruba. I'm wearing Hourglass's 10.5 shade. And I can use everything in here apart from 
really the finishing powders are quite light for me. They, they are leaving a bit of a cast. And also the coral blush was very, very, very subtle. And in fact, both of the blushes were subtle, but the coral needed a lot of building up and, and kind of looked slightly chalky on my skin tone. Like it is just slightly light for me. In winter, when I'm more of a sort of NARS Punjab around that kind of region, this will work beautifully on me. And I was actually pleasantly surprised that the bronzer was perfect for me, definitely not too light and I could certainly use that. So I think if you're fair to light medium, you'll use everything in here. Medium, things will start to be a little too light. But I will say the butterfly palette for me, if I had a fair skin tone, that's probably the one that I would go for, although it doesn't have a bronzer. So it really depends. If you want the bronzer, the elephant is the only one actually that has a bronzer in it. Although I obviously used the tiger palette, the finishing powder in here is a bronzer on me. So if you want a bronzer, you want more new shades for your money, then you know go with Elephant if you're a fair to medium skin tone. If you don't so much mind about the bronzer, if you have a fair skin tone, you wanna be able to use everything in the palette really easily, and you like a vibrant br blush, then maybe Butterfly is for you. For me, without question, by a mile, Tiger is my favorite. I prefer the packaging, although obviously you can change that. This is just so versatile. You know, I use this beautifully as a bronzer. You could certainly as well use this on the eyes. You've got three, for me, for my skin tone, you've got three stunning blush shades in here with varying degrees of luminosity. And you've also got two different, although they are, like they say they're the same formula, they're both called metallic strobe powders. Obviously one is marbled and one isn't, so they can't really be the same formula. And as we saw, they have very different amounts of luminosity. You've got a beautiful, soft, subtle lip from within glow, and you've got then quite a metallic beaming option. So it is much more versatile, not just across skin tones, because you know, you could use this as a finishing powder. This is a highlight. You can build up or use with a light hand and you can just vary where and how you place the products to use them on a bigger range of skin tones but you also just how you can use them what effect you get how glowing or not you are all of that I love and that the fact that I can use this whole palette and that it doesn't have a finishing powder which I do not need you know I've got two in here I've got two in here I've got others in every single palette there's you know at least one finishing powder I love that this has, although it does have a finishing powder, for me and my skin tone, that's a bronzer. So I actually really like that it didn't have dim light in here again, because that is really what separates this palette. The fact that there's no sort of lighter finishing powder in here, it gives you a purpose to purchase this. If you already own several of the ambient lighting palettes, you don't want another dim light or around that shade finishing powder, because you've already got 10 of them. This is going to be far more versatile for lots of people. But as you saw from the comparison swatches, this is by a million miles, the most vibrant, deep, rich shades that we've seen from the brand, as far as my knowledge in any of these palettes that I've ever seen. The comparison swatches really showed how much deeper this palette is than the previous launches and how much more inclusive this palette is. Obviously, I really just cannot wait to see this used on deeper skin tones to really see how well it works and how beautiful it looks on deeper skin tones. I cannot wait. As soon as there are reviews out, of this palette being used on deeper skin tones so we can really see what someone with a deeper skin tone thinks of it, how they get on with it, how it, it works for them. I will start linking some of those in my description box so that you can see on other skin tones how this actually works, but I think it's gorgeous. There's definitely quite a bit of progress been made with the offering of this third palette this year. So my thoughts as far as picking these up or not and rushing out and panic buying them and trying to buy all of them at once, these palettes always, always end up on sale. Give it a couple of months. I'm sure they will start to be included in sales or offers on Cult Beauty Space NK. They always have their, their offers and their sales. Last year's palettes are still available, which is the first time I think that's ever happened from Hourglass. You know, these palettes used to sell out 
in the first couple of days of their release and that just doesn't really happen anymore. So I do think you can still wait for sale. My reading between the lines, although no guarantees, is that these colour stories and palettes themselves may be permanent, just not this packaging which it does state is limited edition artwork. So if you aren't so concerned about the artwork then you can probably wait longer because the artworks will may well sell out quicker but it does read to me like perhaps the palettes are going to be staying longer and they're just going to put them in their more standard packaging which for some of you you may want to wait for that if you don't like the animal packaging so there you have it that is everything i have to say on these two palettes this again is the tiger and this being elephant i absolutely love both of them i enjoyed them both for me tiger is the clear winner definitely the one that gave me the most joy and I enjoyed the most and just love how it looked. Please let me know which your favourite is. If you picked up any of these, what are your thoughts? Please let us know how you're getting along with them and what your skin tone is so we can help each other choose and see what's going to work best for us. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye.